I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast, talking about the food mood connection, why this matters for fertility. We are going through the top 10 uh, items that we see here that impact your mood and why this matters for fertility. Uh, we're giving you recipe ideas. Um, we're giving you uh, tips to help you right now. So if you're feeling anxious, depressed, um, brain fog, your mood is down, you're feeling irritable, um, we're going to talk about how food can then really help your mood. And then that also will improve your fertility. Excited for you to listen. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone on the fertility journey, and my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I am welcoming Caitlin Townsend back to the podcast, and we're digging into the connection between food and mood and why this matters when you're on the fertility journey. Caitlin Townsend is part of my team here at Fab Fertile. She's an integral part of our couples coaching program that uses functional lab testing, diet, and lifestyle changes to dramatically improve conception. If you're struggling with infertility, your body is desperately trying to tell you something and focusing on your health will either help you get pregnant naturally or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, it will improve your chances of success with your own eggs. Caitlin is a functional nutrition therapy practitioner, as well as a chef trained at the Culinary Institute of America. Through her own fertility journey, she's been able to utilize her passion for food and knowledge of functional health to help others on their journey. Thanks so much for listening. I'm so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe or follow. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Caitlin, excited to have you back on the podcast. Yeah, happy to be here. Hey, so today we're talking about Caitlin's favorite topic and mine too, food, um, and really how this impacts our mood. I had no idea for many years what that I what I was eating was making me irritable, and a lot of the, a lot of the the root issues with my um, hormonal imbalance, with my premature ovarian insufficiency at twenty eight were uh, food related. And I actually would have said I was eating a healthy diet. Many people that you know come work with us are like, we're eating a clean diet. We already think we're eating healthy. Um, then as we dig in, you know, are those seemingly healthy foods, are they right for us? So it's not about, um, and although when I said I was eating a clean diet, when I dug in a little more, I'm like, Ooh, there's still some processed stuff I'm, I'm eating. I'm still you doing some of that ready-made stuff. Um, you know, the 80, 20 rule can, can apply at some point, but then if you're intolerant to something, not so much. It doesn't matter if you're if you're intolerant to gluten like I was, and then like 80% of the time I was doing well, and then the 20% I'm pounding down, you know, food that impacts my body, that doesn't serve me. So um today we're gonna well, we're gonna be talking about the food mood connection, why this matters for fertility. And um, first of all, we're gonna start off with protein. And we actually see this on blood chemistry when we're doing our blood chemistry reviews, and it's not to diagnose, but to educate. And we see many people that have low protein intake. And sometimes we get married to a specific diet, be it a plant-based vegan diet, be it a diet we've read from the internet, from a book, from a website, wherever, you know, that diet may have worked for someone, but you know, is it, is it right for you? And so the protein consumption, um, let's talk about that and how that can um, really impact your, your, your mood and fertility. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it doesn't really seem to be a problem for men for, you know, for your partner to be getting in enough protein, but for women, you know, when we're trying to conceive and when we're trying to have a baby and create a whole nother life, we need to have this uh, protein and we need to actually be making sure that we're getting in enough good quality protein for all of our meals, you know, because this is the building blocks of life, you know, of all of our cells and just so incredibly important. And think about it, you know, most times we are in such a rush for breakfast that we might just have a cup of coffee and a piece of toast, you know, or a little bagel or a muffin or whatever. And, you know, so not getting in that protein in the morning uh, is just, it's not going to set ourselves up for uh, the good, a good rest of the day at all. Yeah. I used to start my morning with a little muffin, with a little bagel. I'd be like driving to work and grab something, or I'd have the I have some yogurt, which, you know, the yogurt I was having was laced with sugar, but, um, but you know, some of the Greek yogurt could have been good, but I have an intolerance to dairy, so it wasn't good for me. Um, 
but with the um the protein so um let's talk about kind of the 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 dopamine um like the neurotransmitters and how that impacts that protein is important for for uh, dopamine Absolutely. So talking about, you know, having those balanced meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So having that little bit of protein in the morning can really increase your feel good neurotransmitter, right? That is that dopamine. So you want that little dopamine hit in the morning. um, And it's just so critical to just get you started on the right track. And definitely uh, go check out uh, Fertility Diet Freebie. So Fertility Diet Freebie, um, we, we've run up um, live fertility challenges and Caitlin's helped us design um, the, the meal plans for this. So there's a, there's a grocery shopping list and a meal plan. Um, and all the breakfasts are like really good. Like they're so good. It gets us like out of this freaking rut. And many of them are as easy as um, whacking together some meat and making little like little sausage or meat patties. You have them in the fridge, heat them up, um, add some arugula or maybe some kimchi or something like that. Caitlin makes it, I don't know, she makes it really, um, it's easy, but you feel very fancy when you're, <laughs> when you're eating it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so having that, you say that, that pasture raised pork, chicken, uh, beef, lamb, whatever, um, meat you're selecting. Now, what if someone is, um, is vegetarian or, um, vegan or plant-based? What's, uh, what are you going to say, say there for them? Yeah. You know, um, you just want to be making sure that you are properly soaking your legumes, your beans, different things like that, because, um, these, nuts and seeds and beans, you know, they have, um, they have this chemical that makes you not want to easily digest it. Right. So it can be a little bit harder on your system to break down the usable proteins. So our body, it does prefer animal protein is a little bit easier, you know, on the digestion, um, for many of us, but so properly making sure that you're properly soaking things and uh, cooking them the correct way is going to really help you to better absorb that protein. Yeah. And then cooking them, what would that, so if someone's trying to cook, um, because many, many times with the, well, we see a lot of people with bloating or gas or constipation, diarrhea, alternating between that. So something going on with the, with, with the digestion, and even if you don't have something going on with the digestion, you know, it could be other, other, um, symptoms you're dealing with. So, um, that's why like we can look at your blood chemistry and check to see if there is low protein intake and maybe you're not even absorbing some of these nutrients that you're eating. But, um, if we were to cook the legumes or, or, um, beans or, or plant-based items, like what are, how would we go about doing that? So it does take a little bit of preparation, right? And this is the part that we all skip. And then this is why we're not properly absorbing these things, right? So you do need to soak your beans, you know, at least overnight, Um, try to do that. Even if you're having um, different, you know, grains and and nuts and seeds, uh, sometimes you can actually buy already pre-sprouted nuts, you know, like almonds and, and different things like that, which is so much easier on your digestion. Um, but yeah, you, you really do want to soak, you know, all of those legumes and, and different things so that they're just easier for your gut to absorb all the nutrients. Um, and that can be a good way for you to get in protein. But I always think the easiest way really is uh, having that, that little bit of animal protein, you know, is just gonna, it's just gonna be so good for your body when your body is working extra hard to procreate and, and, you know, have that, have that new baby. So yeah, we, we don't prescribe to any diet. It's very, a personalized approach. We encourage people to have an open mind. So you're like, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm feel very married to my certain diet. Obviously if there's religious issues and that's something that, you know, you, you can, you'll have to work around, but, um, otherwise if you've selected this diet and many people do it for, for the environment, for that, it doesn't feel right for them to eat something with a face. My mom has been like vegan for like 35 years. Um, she's like, I will not eat anything with a face. It's just not what I'm going to do. Um, my dad has been vegan, um, because otherwise he would not eat. So, (laughs) but he has digestive issues. And I keep saying to her, I'm like, 
maybe the the plant-based vegan diet is great for you, but is it right for him? Like my dad's 80 and I'm like, he's having some digestive issues. And I'm like, that's just too, that is too tough on his system. Cause they're eating, like she'll tell me their, their lunch and it's like the amount of roughage and the amount of vegetables. And she's like, we're not eating beans. I'm like, but you are, but yeah. Anyways, it's just interesting where we get kind of very stuck with a certain way of eating and um, to have an open mind that we can potentially change that. Obviously we're here trying to have our child. And so encourage you just to, just to examine it a little bit, see where your tendencies lie on that. And if you feel we've had people that have been life lifelong vegans going, okay, I'm going to have an open mind. Their blood sugar was swinging all over the place because of eating a lot of beans, kind of carbs and blood sugar dysregulation can impact your, your, your sex hormones. So, um, and as they, they switched over to a diet that was right for them, the sex hormones started to even out and, um, because the blood sugar was evening out and this is people that thought they were eating a healthy diet, but was it right for them? So, yes. Okay. So next one we have is complex carbs can be uh, beneficial for your moods. So, um, yeah, we like these so such as, uh, sweet potato, uh, sweet potatoes, quinoa, uh, butternut squash. Um, and as you're saying, properly soaked, uh, uh, legumes. Um, but many of the times, you know, for me, I was having those muffins and the bagels and all of the, and even like oatmeal and things like that, things that were like spiking up my blood sugar. So it's interesting. You can get like a glucose meter and then, um, check that and see, you know, how, how is that impacting your blood sugar? So what would you say about, um, complex carbs, mood, fertility? What are you seeing? So this one is a little bit surprising because so many people on the fertility journey are doing this low carb, low carb, low carb diet, you know, um, where they're getting in the good protein and they're getting in some good fat, but they're so afraid to have any extra carbs. And, you know, like I said, with the protein, we, we are, um, needing these extra resources, you know, and especially when it comes to your moods, the, the complex carbs is what we're talking about instead of the simple carbs. So those complex carbs can really increase your serotonin levels and your serotonin levels is the happiness neurotransmitter, right? So, so if you are a person that maybe leans a little bit more towards, um, you know, maybe mood swings or depression or anxiety, things like that, uh, maybe add some complex carbs in, at least for your dinner. You know, it doesn't have to be the entire plate, but a small portion of a little sweet potato, you know, or in the winter time when all of the, you know, the winter squash are out, different things like that, they can be very beneficial. Um, and they can boost that serotonin. Yeah. Um, I don't do well on no carbs. I, um, I don't know. It's just, it, it does not serve me. I don't, I don't feel great. Um, and so, yeah, as you're saying to add in a little bit to see how you feel. Um, so if someone, yes, as you say, if someone is like gone completely, you know, you can, the whole carnivore diet is a thing right now where all you do is eat meat. Personally, I cannot get my mind around that one. I know people feel, say they feel amazing and it's good for, um, to heal many things for a short period of time. I just, I'm like, I love vegetables and without it, I just would feel when I've gone too restrictive on certain things, it just ends up in a, in a binge. And I don't even consider myself a binge typing person, but um, it, like when you're so restrictive on, on things, what's your take on that? Absolutely. And I think that this is why it is so imperative to listen to your body, you know, and what your specific needs are, because like you said, Sarah, you don't feel that good on a low carb diet. And, you know, maybe other people do, but I always just, I'm a little wary about diets and I think that they should maybe just be a temporary thing. Uh, and what we are always advocating for is, you know, this well-balanced kind of lifestyle um, changes as far as our food goes. So it's not a diet. Um, it's always well-balanced, you know, very nutrient dense, including the, the proteins, the the lots of good fiber, the complex carbs, you know, you're really, you're not denying yourself any of these beautiful foods. It's, it's real. It's all delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next one we have is the gut. And so we've done many, many podcasts on, on get pregnant naturally all about gut health, important of, uh, you know, addressing gut infections, 
Um, and then especially with mood, we've done episodes on anxiety, depression, um, other mood issues, ADHD, and more um, about how the gut is impacting the brain. And yeah, as it was, it was you're saying here, over 90% of, your, um, of your, your serotonin is found in the gut. So what can we, um, what's your take on gut and mood um, and, you know, cleaning up the gut? Yeah, these are directly linked. I mean, absolutely. The gut brain connection is a real thing. Whenever um, people are are coming to me, you know, coming to us complaining of um, anxiety, um, racing, you know, sleepless nights, um, depression, mood swings, all of these things. I, we always want to look at their gut. You know, what is going on? If so much of your serotonin is produced in your gut and that's your happiness, you know, neurotransmitter, um, that's incredibly important as well as your melatonin is produced. Many of it is produced in your gut as well. So, you know, these, these things are critical. So clean up your gut, you're going to rebalance so many different things and then your moods are going to be drastically different for the yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about, um, because we see that when we run a, a stool test where the melatonin could be, um, it could be lowered and that can be an indication that there is gut bugs. And many times we're going and supplementing with melatonin, but then are you getting to the, the, you know, addressing the healing the missed healing opportunities there with, with low melatonin. So it can be indicator that something's off and it's not, you know, the sup, the supplements can be part of the equation I and mean, we use supplements to support healing. But again, if you do that allopathic, you know, pill for an ill, here's the band aid of the supplements and you haven't actually done the diet and lifestyle, you know, what is it down, you know, upstream to, to look at that, then you've, you've missed the whole, whole picture. So yeah, you've got anxiety, depression, um, mood swings, irritability. Um, yeah, that was me, (laughs) the irritability and the mood swings with the blood sugar and, and more. Um, and I had all these gut infections and we see it all the time. People with low AMH and high FSH is our specialty, you know, premature ovarian insufficiency, diminished ovarian reserve, people with, AMH of like, we just helped someone with an AMH of 0.04 get, you know, get pregnant naturally. So if it can happen for them, it can happen for you. And so it's, and you know, most people that we work with have been told donor eggs, you are done. Like nothing's going to work. And we're making these simple, but not easy changes. Like this stuff's not easy. Like there's a lot of societal pressure where we've got to, you know, why is, first of all, why is the person down the street who just eats processed food popping up babies left, right, and center. And we're over here eating, you know, no, no gluten and organic and all this stuff. And it seems unfair um, to me, you know, for us, anyone listening to this for Caitlin and I, it's, it's impacted our, our fertility. Um, other people, it could be cancer, diabetes, heart disease, any number of other different um, health issues. And it's like that tipping point where you could be fine. You're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then the body's like, eh, not fine anymore. Tipping point. And then <laughs> And it, and cause things have been brewing in there, these infections, this, you know, those biochemical imbalances and the body can only take it for so long. Um, and then we talk a little bit about the uh, vagus nerve and I've done some podcast episodes on that actually one around, um, essential oils. So putting like on the vagus nerve, like on the, behind the ear, you put, um, a pressure point on there. I can't remember the name of it now. Um, and then, um, that can help stimulate the vagus nerve, even like humming or singing or gargling, which is then that helps you get into that parasympathetic state. So um, anything you want to say there? Yeah, that is just, you know, huge, hugely important. Um, And so like you mentioned, and all of those little traits, you know, that probably we used to do back in the day before there was TV and like all this entertainment, we probably used to sing and hum a little tune while we were folding the clothes or pulling the weeds or whatever it was. And it is just kind of calming. And, you know, the um, it's like the what is it? The universal um, ohm. Yes. And so it is creating kind of this calming sensation, right? So, so it is, we're always looking to get in that, uh, calm rest and digest kind of state. Yeah. I was at yoga the other day and we did a whole, there's like 30 of us in there. We did a whole ohm and then, which was really cool. Cause it's even like gathering again and having, having here. Yeah. Yes. With the vibrating piece of it. And then also, and then another instructor just said, okay, we're going to do ohm, but I was ready to do my big breathe and I breathe out. And so he just goes, ohm. 
I'm like, oh, oh. And we're just like, oh. I'm like, oh wow, I've never heard that one before. That was different. Yeah, yeah. it was. A, this was a very spiritual studio, and he's like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm doing but yeah, I like love singing. I love um, like you know when I'm in the car, like singing. Every you know, my husband, kids are like, please stop the singing. <laughs> And I'm like, well, that's so nice. I'm yeah, like, that's so I'm like, nice. I'm like, I'm a great singer. They're like, no, you're not. I'm like, yes, I am. And literally, because when the kids were younger, I used to say to them, um, I know every song there is. <laughs> I know the words. Oh I love singing to the whatever songs. And they're they're like, oh, for the longest time, I really thought you knew all the songs because I'd be like singing to them. <laughs> oh. Mom's a weird. I love it. Um, oh. So, um, yeah, so looking into your gut and really addressing that gut brain connection is key. Um, and so, anything on the food piece on that one you wanted to say with the gut? Um, obviously, like what's like some some probiotic, some prebiotic foods, some probiotic foods, the prebiotic foods. Um, yeah, like kimchi or sauerkraut. Anything you want to share there? So yeah, so prebiotics are probably foods that you cook with quite often that you don't even know about. So things like onions and garlic. Now there are some outliers like artichokes you might not cook with all the time and leeks, you know, those types of things, but those are really good prebiotics. Also chicory as like a little tea, you know, that's a really good kind of bitter digestive tea and that's a excellent prebiotic. Um, You know, just in general, I think, slowing down for your meals, taking a a couple of deep breaths before you eat. You know, we're always used to eating drive through in the drive through, you know, in the car or eating, standing up or eating and, um, you know, talking, talking, talking. And it's just like, we have to slow down and it's going to really, really help our digestion so much to better able to absorb things. I love that, that mindful eating piece. I'm always like trying to like gulp things down, do things quickly. And I'm like, I, I do always will, will sit, you know, sit down at a table, make sure I eat. Cause if I'm running somewhere or eating the car, I just, I, I can feel myself like gulping air or afterwards I just don't feel great. So that the, the mindful eating is key. Can you just back up a little bit on the, the, the artichoke. So I literally, I see those artichokes and I'm, I'm scared of them. And I, I haven't, I don't think I've actually cooked with an artichoke. Like, what, cause I think people, they slice them and then they drizzle with olive oil and they can, they can, um, I grill them, but like, what, what do you do with them anyways? I obviously you see the pickled ones, but those ones aren't, aren't really good for you. Are they? Yeah. So no, I would say, you know, you need to really watch the ingredients. If you're getting any canned artichokes or, or ones that are packed in oil, what type of oil are they packed in different things like that. So pay attention to that, but artichokes, it's a very Italian thing. You know? And so you, you could get a whole artichoke and throw it in the a pot of water to boil it. You know, you might have to trim it down a little bit, um, but you slice it open and you want to kind of scoop out the fuzzy bit because it's actually a thistle. And so inside is the flower part and it can be a little um, hairy or kind of, you know, a little fuzzy tasting and not, not pleasant. So you do want to scoop that out. But the thing about artichokes is that sure you can have them on your salads and, you know, with your salmon and that would be delicious, but it's kind of a communal dish. So you would take it and dip it in the you know, the really delicious olive oil or the grass fed butter and, you know, bite each little leaf. And so it takes time and it's a slow process. And it's something you do with, you know, over conversation with when you're having a little dinner party or when you're just by yourself and you want to, you know, have something uh, delicious. So, so, you, so you, yes. you, you, you boil it for like, what, 10 minutes then? Then scoop no, up the- they take so long. Oh, <laughs> It depends well, it for four on, hours. Um, yeah, it depends on how, how big it is. You know, some of the little baby ones are coming out. Maybe it'll take um, half an hour or something. Um, but the large ones, you can cut them in half, but they're still going to take about an hour to, okay. to or to steam. You can steam them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, neat. And then cut, um, scoop out that. So, yeah, and I, I, I like those, the, those prebiotic and probiotic foods. So, definitely... Um, so again, so the artichokes, the chicory, the leeks, the onions, the garlic, um, um, anything else? Uh, yeah, there's so many different ones out there, but they're a little bit more unusual, like hearts of palm, um, different things like that, but you can't ever go wrong with the onions and the garlic. So, you know, you can always, you can always find that. 
Okay. Awesome. Okay. Eating breakfast. So for your mood, um, yeah, this is where, you know, many times people, and there's a whole thing with the fasting piece and you don't want to make sure you, if you fasted too long and then you get that blood sugar thing, which then is going to defeat the purpose for like for fertility. Um, we've done a couple episodes on intermittent fasting and how that can, um, um, impact your fertility negatively. So you want to make sure, again, this is very personalized, um, but eating breakfast. And so I've always needed to eat breakfast. I could never understand anyone that would skip breakfast. That sounds insane to me. Um, but probably because my blood sugar was off and because I ate junk before, but, um, now I can go a little longer without getting into the, into the, 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 the jittery piece, but, um, this is key for stabilizing your blood sugar. So anything you wanted to share, share there? Absolutely. So think about it. If you, and this is critical, like you mentioned, Sarah, for, you know, women trying to conceive. So if you are a man, you know, maybe intermittent fasting is a little bit easier on your system. If you are a menopausal woman, you know, maybe it's a little bit easier and doable, but for right now, you know, in this time period of your life, you need to have some substance in the morning and it's going to set you up for the day as far as your blood sugar, like you mentioned, and also your cortisol levels. So this is your stress hormone. So you do not want your stress hormone spiking all day long and first thing in the morning, you know, it's going to affect so many other things. So let's help to really balance that cortisol out by eating some good protein, little fat and some fiber. Yeah. So give us some ideas here there. So we talked about some of the protein so we can do the the little sausage patties or the breakfast, um, yeah, the, be it lamb, pork, beef, whatever works for you. Um, what else are some good, um, options? Definitely check out you know, that, um, check out the fertility diet freebie. We have a whole menu for you. Um, but what are, what are some options? It's a seasonal thing too, isn't it? You know, because now we're getting, um, into some warmer weather. So some occasional smoothies here and there, but I do like to kind of have food that you chew because that gets the digestive juices flowing. And so if it's a little bit thicker kind of a smoothie, that's always good, you know, to have. Um, so, so that's very seasonal. I'm not a smoothie fan in the winter time. Um, I think that's a little cold on the cool. whole yeah. system and we're wanting to always warm, you know, warm the body, warm the uterus and everything. So, um, but like you mentioned, those little sausage patties, um, sometimes the quickest thing for me really is just to have leftovers. And I know it's a weird concept, but it's quick. You know, it has protein, fat, and fiber in it. You had it last night. It tasted good. It's going to be good this morning. And it will take you literally five minutes just to heat it up and eat it. You know, yeah, those to- breakfast hash where you could take some of the meat and the veggies from last year and it, from last, last night. And sometimes we get stuck that it's got to be pancakes and eggs and, you know, the typical standard American diet fare. Um, and I, I still, you know, you can do, obviously if you, you know, eggs are top allergen, so you want to make sure you're not intolerant to them, but, um, you know, bacon, then you want to make sure you get bacon that's gluten-free and organic and not full of nitrates. And, and, um, you know, we always recommend or, uh, organic, uh, foods anyways. Um, Depending on you, like we've talked about, you know, we are also unique. We're also different. Um, a savory oatmeal is really, really yummy. And you can put things like your, it doesn't have to be oatmeal necessarily. You know, it can be another, um, um, you know, like gluten-free kind of, um, quinoa or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like the hemp hearts and the buckwheat, which is not wheat. Um, it's actually a seed. So you can have your kind of little porridge combination that's savory where you put like, maybe you put in some really good, um, if you can do cheese, you know, like a, like a aged cheddar or something like that. And maybe you put in like some cherry tomatoes and some baby spinach and different things like that. A little, you know, broken up um, bacon or a little bit of sausage, you know, something like that, that you are including all of the good things and it's going to be quite filling to you. Yeah. I find when I have the fat and protein, like I just, I'm just not hungry. Like I I'm, I'm satiated and the blood sugar is not swinging around. And, and then I just am more productive and I just feel better. And, um, you don't need to snack all the time, every single hour, no snacking. So thank goodness. (laughs) Yeah. We have a couple of cool ones in that, um, challenge too, is the, the little parfaits. I always feel very fancy when I have those. So it's coconut yogurt. And then we do some berries with, um, different seeds. So chia, so we do pumpkin, s- sunflower, chia, hemp heart, 
and you layer it like a little pumpkin thing, um, like layer it, and then you throw it in the fridge. And the next day you have a parfait. I've done this for, um, I go, we went on away on a girlfriend weekend. I did it for all the girlfriends there. They loved it. I went away with my friend, with her, her, um, her family. They, they loved it. Everyone's like, Ooh, look at this. It's like a little parfait and you feel, feel very fancy. So, um, (laughs) definitely check out that, uh, the fertility diet freebie to, to get that recipe. Um, also, yeah, you have like a strawberry, there's a strawberry. Oh, there's a strawberry mousse in there too. Yeah. That's like, I really like that one. <laughs> yeah. That one is really good. And so that has your gelatin in it. So it's sweet, you know, but it has this gelatin that's going to, or collagen, you know, that's going to help sustain you and a little bit longer. So it's, it's well balanced. The next one we have is fat. We've talked about this before um, on the podcast. You know, the baby's brain is made of fat. You want to make sure, um, yeah, your brain is fat. Like you want to make sure that you're getting your fats. For years, I was not hardly eating any healthy fats. Um, so let's talk about some examples of some. And and when we have the fat and the protein together, that stabilizes our mood, which then helps our blood sugar, which helps our sex hormones. So all of this is, is key. And a lot of times we're maybe afraid of the fat, like low fat craze. I think some of us know now that fat is good, but you may still be stuck in this calories versus, you know, so you could be more calories. I'm our, my thing is, and our thing is don't count calories, count chemicals. Like don't look and see what the ingredients are chemicals, forget about the calories. Um, what are some examples of some good fats we can have? Oh yeah. So, so many good things. Um, and just going back, you know, you said it's so important for the baby's brain, for our brain, our brain is made of 60% fat, almost 60% fat. So if without that fat, you know, how is your brain going to be able to function appropriately? You know, how are you going to have the, you know, cognitive ability to not have brain fog and to remember things and to be, you know, working at your best. So the fat is so necessary. It's so needed. Um, Some examples would be, you know, the coconut um, mana, which is kind of like coconut butter. So it's really thick and rich and delicious. You can pop it in your smoothies or your hot lattes, really delicious. Um, obviously, you know, your, uh, very good quality olive oil that you want to drizzle on top of your meals after they're finished, you know, like your salads or on top of your protein or, you know, your salmon or your, um, your good chicken, all of those kinds of things, just drizzle on it afterwards. Um, it'll be so flavorful, so delicious, but besides, um, oils, you know, things like your avocados, your nuts, um, your good quality fish, like the salmon. Um, there's just so many good sources of fat and listen, fat is flavor. So without the fat, it's not going to taste very good. And when you eat a low fat, uh, item, you know, like a low fat yogurt or whatever, they are loaded with sugar because they took out all the good flavor. So they had to replace it with something that was going to make it palatable and not taste like cardboard. So they had to load it up with the sugar, lots of fake stuff to make it taste good. So we want our fat for our flavor. And also sardines. Um, Caitlin's always trying to put the sardines in these (laughs) the fertility challenge. I'm like, I don't think Sarah never lets me. I'm like, don't do it. I think everyone hates sardines because you know what? I was tortured with uh, sardines when I was a kid. My mom was always like, sardine sandwiches, Sarah, here we go. Um, so, but I love sardines, but no, they're not in the challenges, but yeah, I get a can of sardines, like the, you know, making sure that they're organic and wild caught and, and the rest, um, that can be really good too for your, your, um, omega threes and then helping to all of these, help this help with your mood, depression. and Absolutely. more. Absolutely. So needed critical. And then some foods that are, are rich in vitamin D. Um, I think we know, you know the past two years that it's important to um, boost our immune system. And uh, many of us, typically the clients we're working with, you know, low AMH and high FSH, we're seeing people with vitamin D down in the single digits, down in the teens. Um, conventional uh, medicine uh, function, um, reference ranges are saying that, you know, anything over 30 is fine. Functional reference ranges, it should be anywhere from 60 to 80 or, or more. Um, did a whole deep dive uh, into vitamin D on the podcast episode too. So check that out. But um, yeah, let's talk about some foods that are rich in vitamin D. There is those, those sardines are coming up again. Woo-hoo. Yay to the sardines. Definitely. So we have the sardines, you know, egg yolks, um, liver is a little tricky one, right? So sometimes I would say, you know, maybe 
our parents or our grandparents' generation, maybe they ate the liver one, once a week or something like that. You always hear about liver and onions, but we never grew up with that. Or maybe, you know, maybe you did and you're a liver lover, but many of us are not. And it can be a little challenging to get it in, but you can sneak this liver in to different meat loaves. I've done this to my husband before and he does not even know. So it's really, it's a really a uh, nice little trick. So meatloaf, you can pretty much sneak anything into, um, <laughs> but add your liver in, try to get it in, you know, once a week, if you can, you can also, there's obviously liver supplements and different things like that, but egg yolks, liver, the really good kind of oily fish, like Sarah said, the sardines, the salmon, sometimes mackerel, and even mushrooms can be a source of vitamin D. Yeah. The, um, the liver piece is yeah. Putting it. Cause I literally said to my husband, I'm like, okay, we're going to start cooking with liver. This is great. Cause he grew up on liver. He loves liver and onions. Him and his mom would just like chow it down. I'm like, okay, I got this real organic liver. It's amazing. <laughs> Let's cook it up. And I'm just like, no, no. And I, right, so, every- so I have the key. I've got the key. I found the rest. I found the, the trick. Um, so you chicken livers, first of all, you got to start with the chicken livers. Okay. Beef- way too strong, pork is really strong too. So chicken livers are pretty mild and you're still getting an amazing, you know, vitamin D, vitamin A, all the good things that you need. Um, so you take the chicken livers, you, you, um, fry them at your cast iron pan. Yes. You have to have lots of garlic and lots of lemon, the lemon juice, lemon. Okay. Uh, cut the flavor. It's going to make it really delicious. You can add a little bit of bacon in there if you want as well. And even my husband liked it. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was like this, <laughs> the, the, the beef liver. I'm like, I am dying. I'm like, <laughs> chicken liver. okay. Yeah, so we'll try that. Yeah. And also if you have a, you know, your butcher, you can have them add it to your, 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 your ground beef. So it's in there. Perfect. Yeah. But organ meats are, are key, really good for, for, for fertility and your health. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to do the chicken liver. I'm scared to buy it, but um, it just seems scary looking, but, but, but yeah, cause like I grew up mostly vegetarian, like, you know, my mom was still having a little bit of meat and then the vegan. So definitely there was no liver in our house. Um, okay. And the vitamin D, um, yeah, like, so low levels, we see it, uh, either connected with, um, gut infections. It's potentially, we see people with, with autoimmune issues with low, with low vitamin D, so supplementing obviously is important. Vitamin D is a hormone. You want to make sure you're getting your, your, your levels tested. Um, but those are some good foods. And so that's an indicator. Something could be off and it's not just here's the vitamin D and off we go. Let's dig deeper and see, you know, see why. And there's a reason why, you know, they call it the seasonal affective disorder. You know, in the winter time, we are not outside as much. We're kind of cooped up in, in our dark little homes and, you know, don't go out for any brisk walks because it's too cold. It's definitely too cold in Canada. So I don't know what you do in the winter. I still go out. I force myself. <laughs> go out. That's so good. That is so good. Um, but in the South, we're, we're a bit chicken. So. <laughs> I can't imagine. But anyway, it's just so, so critical. So you have the seasonal affective disorder where people are down in the dumps and they're just feeling, you know, just depressed. And there is a reason because we are not getting in our good quality sunshine, you know, the sunshine um, hormone, the sunshine vitamin. So need that vitamin D. So maybe eat some extra liver in the winter time. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I forced myself to get out 365 and I come out West right now. And, and the cold weather, I talked to my husband the other day. He's like, it's 90. I'm like, no, what, what are you telling me? <laughs> I'm at 50. It's still wow. cold out here. I'm on the, on Vancouver Island. And I'm like, the other day I had my hat on. It was so windy. The ocean was like flying along here. And I'm like, wind was coming. And I'm like, the branches were down. I'm like, why? I, I want to be back with the 90. Anyways, I guess I'm meant to be with cold. I don't know. Yes. Um, okay. So eat the rainbow. Maybe this, my mother was always like, Sarah, you, she, she even says this now when, you know, when she goes to bed each night, she goes, I just count all the veggies I've eaten d- during the day. Did I have my fruits and my veggies? And she lists uh, my mother, you know, has like 12 of them. My mom's like 26, 26. Gosh, she's <laughs> my mom was wow. so <laughs> she must look amazing wow <laughs> she's 76 wow <laughs> oh my god she's 76 but uh but yeah but when she goes to bed sorry. <laughs> oh when she goes to bed yeah she counts the, these vegetables so you know why is it important to making sure that we have these eating the rainbow 
for, for our uh, mood, and our fertility. And the antioxidants, I mean, you know, these beautiful colors of the rainbow, your mom is so smart, you know, to do this. So that is so wonderful. Um, yeah, so they are just packed with antioxidants. So the more different colors that you can get in, the blueberries and the red bell peppers, you know, and the all the different green things and the orange vegetables, I mean, it's just critical. So all of those amazing antioxidants, you know, this is anti against oxidation. So think of oxidation as in your body, things are like rusting, you know, when, when nails get rusty and they're all oxidized, this is what's happening in our body. It's not good. So we need all of these, um, you know, beautiful fruits and vegetables to really help, um, all of this inflammation to help calm things down. Yeah, it is interesting with that, with the, the vegetables, because sometimes I'll get into a I always say to my husband, I'm like, where's the salad? Where's the extra vegetables? Because he's like, I'm just going to eat the meat. <laughs> I don't need the vegetables. Um, I crave them, feel better with them, would like to have two, three vegetables with a salad. Um, doesn't always happen, but um, I feel better with that. And maybe just because it obviously it makes my mood feel better, but I just feel happier with myself. I'm like, look at me with all these vegetables. So it is to have probably more than what you, th you think you even need. And then you don't need all the other foods. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the snacky foods. Um, yes. <laughs> speaking, speaking of snacky foods, next one we have is dark chocolate. So uh -huh. I do love myself some some chocolate. Um, I had a small problem with chocolate that got out of hand um, that, that was like all the time. And now um, so I, I will do like a, a, a dark chocolate that's, um, you know, that's very dark um, because and a lot of them are, you know, the milk chocolate, obviously if you have a dairy issue um, and some of the chocolates are just filled with soy lecticin, which can be bad for your fertility. You know, soy is one of the top um, allergens. And so you want to get a really good quality. I think we like a uh, hue, right? Oh, absolutely. Chocolate. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to try that one yet, but that's a, it actually, actually was developed by the fellow who had autoimmune disease. I think um, that's why he was like, he wanted to have a little good snack. That thing is just blown up, but uh, HU. So what's um, eat um, eating dark chocolate? What's your take? Yeah. So there are so many interesting um, amino acids, neurotransmitters that actually research has been done on chocolate and why we as pretty much all humans, you know, we just love this and it is associated with, you know, with love and we feel so good with it. So there's a couple different ones. Um, so theobromin, um, which is one of the amino acids that come in chocolate. And this is the name comes from, I think it's like an Aztec word and it means food for the gods. And so obviously, you know, um, cacao beans are grown in such warm climates, you know, like um, Mexico and South America and different areas like that. Um, so yeah, so th they really treasured this, this um, cacao tree and the cacao bean and everything. And then there's tryptophan, which is also an amino acid that helps us to increase serotonin levels, you know, which is our happiness hormone, our happiness neurotransmitter. So really, really important. And then there's another one, it's called anadimide, and this helps to really release, relieve anxiety, which is just so, so, you know, when you, like Sarah, you were saying, you kind of had like a little, um, maybe like a little problem with, uh, with too much chocolate. And so there is this thing where it's like sending off these, um, exciting, you know, kind of like dopamine hits of like, oh, this was good. I need another piece. I need another piece. I need another piece, you know? So just kind of, you know, be wary of like, oh, this is such a feel good thing that, you know, maybe you need to just like stop. <laughs> you know, I remember I was studying macrobiotics for, for a while and I was away on this retreat and one of the practitioners looked at my hand somehow and he's like, Sarah, you need to stay away from chocolate. I'm like, what? Oh, I, like at that well. point I was pounding down all kinds of sugary treats and lots of, lots of chocolate stuff, like my eclairs and whatever the heck I was doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, I think I was just, I was just tipping into the, you know, dipping, dipping my toe into some of this, um, other ways of eating, but yeah, the uh, cacao making, um, all sorts of fun things with that, like fat bombs. Like what, what are some of the other stuff that you, you've like, Caitlin has like a lot of these little, um, yeah, with the cacao, some treats and stuff like that. Anything you can think of? Yeah, because like you mentioned in the beginning, some of these chocolates that you get can be filled with a lot of 
um, ugh, additives and, you know, the milk chocolate, and they really don't have the good stuff in them anymore. Um, and so you can just get really good quality cocoa or cacao, and you can make some, you know, beautiful hot chocolates just with water and, uh, um, the coconut mana, that coconut butter, oh my gosh, makes it so creamy, so rich, so thick and delicious. Um, you can make the, you know, cacao smoothies, I like to hide even like with dark cherries, you know, frozen dark cherries and the cacao. Um, and then I, I'll even hide some, um, you know, steamed uh, cauliflower in there and it's going to make it super creamy. I promise you will not taste the cauliflower at all. You're just going to taste the cherries and the chocolate. It's going to be delicious. So, so cauliflower, so frozen cauliflower, was it frozen cherry, like Bing cherries? Yeah. So you can just like get the frozen cherries cacao and then maybe yeah. coconut milk or, or, or coconut yeah. manna. What are you putting in there? No, you can do. Yeah. I like to, I like to always have the um, good fat. So you could do some hemp hearts, which are good in protein and good fat. You could do, you know, maybe the little bit of the coconut um, oil, like the MCT oil, things like that. Um, you can do the coconut mana, the butter. Um, you could do half of an avocado for a little bit of fat and those things, they're going to be, uh, covered up by the, that rich dark chocolate. So it's just going to give that kind of milkshake like consistency. You don't need to add water to that one. Do you, or add water, add water, but you don't need to add coconut milk or almond milk or anything like that. Just plain water will be good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And then what, give us a, like a little quick thing for like a, um, a chocolate little, we've made these before a little chocolate. Fat dessert. Bomb. Yeah. Fat yeah. Bomb. Yeah. So these, so for the holidays, I'll actually make my own little, I used to love like Reese's cups. I used to love those peanut butter cups. Oh, love them. But now, now they're, they would be way too sweet for me to yeah. even. And so now you can make your own chocolate bars by just pouring the good quality cocoa with the coconut oil. So you mix them together and then if you pour them into like a little mold, maybe a little muffin tin lined with, you know, um, some wax paper or something like parchment paper, um, it'll make a chocolate bar if you put it in the freezer, right? You can't eat it when it's 90 degrees out, but, you know, eat it in the AC and you'll be fine. And then you can mix it with the, you know, your cashew butter or your, you know, your almond butter or whatnot and put a little sea salt on top. And it's, oh, my mouth is watering right now. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Cause you do it in the double boiler, right? So you get the double boiler, um, just get, well, I just get a, a, one of my like stainless steel bowls and then boil some water and then put in, um, a little bit of the coconut oil and then your chocolate melt it. And then you're putting, and where are you, when are you putting, when are you putting the cashews in there? You mix it with the cashews before you pop yes. it in the freezer or if you want it to be kind of like a chocolate peanut butter entire thing, then yeah, you can mix the, all of it together and it'll be chocolate and peanut butter bar kind of thing. And it'll be so good. Or if you want to do more work, then you can like layer it, you know, so it's more of that chocolate peanut butter kind of cup. Um, so you would have your, your Coke, your chocolate kind of bar mixture, and then you would put in your almond butter or your nut butter, and then you put another layer of chocolate on top and it's so good. Would you freeze it each time? So you put the chocolate and then you'd freeze and then put the um, the little, the peanut or the the cashew and then freeze. And you'd have a, like a little layered thing, which it sounds complicated. This stuff is like so easy. Like, <laughs> and Caitlin makes hers look beautiful. Mine look like blobs, but they still taste <laughs> good. Um, and yeah, you've got some little, little molds and stuff like that, which would you, or like a little muffin tin or something. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, it does sound a little complicated, but it's so easy. You can, there's a bazillion recipes out there and I, and I'm sure Sarah has some good recipes as well. So yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. So the last one is staying away from poor quality food. Uh, yeah. Don't eat the processed food, the, uh, ready-made freezer stuff. Um, that's, you know, that can impact your mood impact anxiety, depression, um, also, you know, taking away your energy. Um, you know, if, if, if your grandma's like, what's that mean? You know, as Michael, Michael Palin tells us, if it's got more than five ingredients and your great grandma is like, I don't know what that is. Don't eat it. Um, it should just be like shop the periphery of the grocery store and stuff with things that you buy in a, in a box, just really minimize that. Cause people are like, Oh, what's gluten-free? Well, there's a lot of foods that are naturally gluten-free. It doesn't need to be have the label because everything now is like, woohoo, it's gluten-free. Here's the claim. And it's filled with garbage, like just garbage. 
Um, yeah, so staying away from processed, poor quality food, even if it's label, especially if it says natural, you know, got some health claims on it, run the other way. What's your take on, on this one? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's almost like you have to be this, uh, food detective with this magnifying glass now, because all the ingredients are so little on the back, you know, and on the front, they have this amazing advertising, like all natural and, and, you know, just like, so good for you. And then you look on the back and you're like, what, you know, (laughs) canola oil and soybean oil and all this, all this really cheap, really inflammatory stuff that is not going to make you feel good and your mood. Um, yeah, I, I'm always like, take note. How do you feel after you eat that? Do you feel energized or do you feel like you want to go take a nap? You know, do you feel full and satisfied or are you like, you know, hungry an hour later and snapping at your husband? So <laughs> your body is always giving you clues and will always tell you. Absolutely. So what are your, what are some final thoughts you have on our topic today? Um, I think, you know, this journey can be a struggle, but we can really take the the food part and bring a little bit more joy into it again, you know, just by doing things that your mama said, Sarah, eating all those good, you know, rainbows, eating your rainbow every day, you know, just bringing a little bit more joy into it, have your little dark piece of chocolate, you know, and enjoy that and put some fat on all of your food and enjoy the flavor and the taste and the richness that it lends. Um, You know, this is definitely can be a pleasurable side to everything. Yeah. It's not about deprivation. It's like, people are like, what do you eat? I'm like, what do you eat? I feel bad for you. (laughs) Um, You know, it's like eating awesome foods and it's not about, you know, sitting in the corner, just eating cardboard. That's definitely not what's happening. So it's, these are some really awesome ideas. Caitlin makes it like super fun. Definitely check out the fertility diet freebie. And there's a full guide there, grocery shopping list. Uh, We have seasonal um, guides in there. So right now as we're recording this, we're still in spring. So um, if you're in the, what are we Northern hemisphere? Yeah. I don't even (laughs) know. wherever we are. Um, and, uh, yeah, so definitely, um, you want to check that out and thanks again, Caitlin for coming on the podcast. Thank you.